Hey friends and family. Hello, Rex and Shady here. Hey, thanks for joining us. Always glad to, always glad to share with you. It's always, it's always a wonderful experience. So thank yeah. you. If, you, if you're watching through these videos, just thank you in advance. I mean, we definitely really appreciate that. And, you know, we're here to just open up our hearts and put our, kind of put the heart on the sleeve as it were, and, and just, just share with you and hope that something in all of this can help you in some kind of a way with whatever it is you're going through in your life. That's right. So tell me what's going on for you this week. What's new? What's good? What's different? How's life landing for you? Well, it's the first week of the new year. So as uh, oftentimes it's the case, um, you know, we've, we've talked in previous videos about the whole traumatic brain injury thing. And, you know, so it's a little bit of a mixed bag. All, all in all, I would say the start of the new year has been really wonderful in a lot of ways. Um, but, you know, I'm still dealing with just uh, getting daily migraines, which is daily a, migraines. A fresh, fresh, so real for both of us. Frustrating kind of a thing. Um, but I don't want to dive too much into that right now. We've, we've talked a bit about that in other videos. Yeah. But you know, talk about, you know, the, the cool things that have been going on, you know, in, the, in the, this first week of the year. Um, you know, a lot of it for me is, is based in the music and working on music and making and, and writing, composing, mixing, mastering music. And it seems like it's one of the things, or probably the only thing, that I can seem like I, I could just about always do. It's it's so easy on the brain, um, even when I don't feel well. It seems like music is yeah. something I can still bring myself, you know, at least on at least on enough of a level where I can at least get into that little bit. So that's that's been one of those true goddess sense for me is that to have the music in my life because everything else I do. Don't get me wrong, I have other wonderful things that I'm into, but everything makes me tired. But um, and aside from that. You know, growing my, my online store, gravity.life, growing that. I've got some new designs up, up on it, which has been exciting, getting some stuff done there. Um, let's see, what else? I think that's probably, uh, and, and not to say that, that, you know, to make light of it all, but that for me actually makes for a pretty good week to get some of those kinds of things finished. You know, making progress with my store and, and definitely spending time with music are definitely two things that are really good, good for my soul, for sure. They are. So, um, so how about you, Shana, what's going on? Oh my gosh. Um, Where to start, right? Yeah. Well, so. It has been a lot. I mean, it has been a lot. Okay. So, you know, I, I, I share personal stuff on here, but I don't make it too personal. I don't make it overwhelming. Um, but, in but at the same the, time, we want to be real. Some very real things have been going on. For some sure. very real things have been <clears> going on. So, in the last eight weeks, um, I have had nine friends and family members transition from this life into new life and that's kind of a lot in a really short period of time um you know the rule of threes oh it happens in threes not true and i don't know who came up with that <laughs> um definitely not true in my case so i'm feeling into a lot of big spaces with that i mean any one of those takes time to process let alone having so many in such a short period of time it has been one a week for the last eight weeks except for this week it's been two and i'm i'm feeling a whole lot with that and i'm not grieving because i don't have time to grieve and process through the transition of one person i care about before another person leaves this realm and goes to the next and, and there was another one just here a couple of days ago yep it's been yeah it was early saturday morning here it is monday that's not a lot of time to breathe and she was a good friend so i'm i'm feeling i'm feeling a whole lot and um a week ago today someone else i care about transitioned and I've known him since I was 18. I just turned 18 when we met. Um, yeah, I'm feeling a lot. It's a lot of, a lot of big emotion, but I'm keeping it contained in a very small space because, as I said, as soon as one happens, before I can even look at it and address it and do something with it and hold it tenderly, something else happens. Then I can't even look at that because as soon as I start to peek just a little bit, something else happens. And it's just been like that consistently. Um, at some point, hopefully you're gonna get some time with this. Hopefully you can get a respite from so much of this. I mean, I need it. I totally understand. <laughs> I'm sighing a lot and breathing a lot and sending love and burning candles and burning incense and Spending a little bit more time outside, even when it's cold, just to breathe. Mm, 
Now that the weather is warm for the next two days, uh, warmer. <laughs> it's warm. It's all relative. It's warm, we're, right? We're in Denver relative. Here, so it's, yeah. it's relative. relative. I mean, it's not bad. It's really not been bad. It's been pretty nice for, for Denver for, for this time of year. Right. Um, I'll be walking outside more, taking my puppy for more walks until the next snowfall. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's just, that's just where I am with this right now. And I'm holding, holding space for myself, holding a lot of tenderness, doing a lot of rolling on the floor, rocking, gentleness. Um, but to look at it and address it, no. <laughs> it's been too much in a short time. So that's kind of where I am. And of course, it's hard to say what's going to be happening moving forward. But um, and again, all I can say is I just hope that we can catch a break. I mean, I've been to periods of my life where I've, I've lost a lot of very people, a lot of wonderful people I was close to in a very short period of time. Um, thankfully, I have a little bit of space and distance from the last person that I was close to that passed. Um, but but I know it just there's just just there's no easy way through any one of these. I mean, you want to take time with each one. You want to process each one. You want to properly grieve each one because every individual that means so much to you and so much to your life. And um, of course, when it happens that many times in a row, I mean, it is. It, it's just. I know for me, having been through this, also, you know, a few years, just a few years back, actually, it was just the yeah. feeling of just being overwhelmed. You know, right. there's just the emotions are just kind of on, on, a, on a sort of overload mode, and it's all you can do just process your way through a day and maintain. You know, try to. Your daily activities, you know, whatever your work is, whatever, you know, you, whatever it is you do, just on a normal day, try to maintain that and, and, and be some kind of an even keel through all of that's that it. stuff. And, that, and that's that's the big challenge right now, right? Just trying to just be able yeah. to just move through your day and, and breathing and getting through the day. That's it. You know, and also and instead of just literally just breaking right down, and just, right. just just crumbling to the ground and just breaking right down, and then you're done for a while. I know you, you we can't let that kind of thing happen, obviously. Right. Well, another thing too is one of my very best friends, Carlos, I can't reach him right now. His birthday was a couple of days ago and I've been calling and texting to wish him a happy birthday and I can't reach him. Um, apparently he's not on Facebook anymore. Um, somehow we were not connected on Instagram, but we were recently, we're not right now. I don't know what happened. I sent him a request. We've never not been connected. Um, we've been friends since we were 21. Uh, we were partners for a while. I, I don't, I don't know what happened. He's one of my best friends, right. and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really concerned about him, and I don't know where to find him. I wanted to contact his sister. She's not on Facebook anymore. Um, at least that I can see. I nothing's making sense. I'm. I'm really, I'm just, with all the loss going on and now not being able to reach him, which is the first time in my life, I'm really concerned. Um, I'm feeling, I'm really, really feeling. Uh, he's one of the most important people in the world to me and a great friend and I love him and I want to know if he's okay, so. Very understandable. Yeah, so it's a lot, it's a lot to feel. I know. And how, how can you not go through the worst case scenario after we've just been going through? So I imagine, you know, yeah, I'm how, not, how do you not think about that? I mean, I'm trying to not let my mind wander, but at the same time, my heart's just very tender. It's aching and I'm kind of like, where's my friend and is he okay? I just need to know he's okay. Right. And I don't know how to find out if he's okay. I just don't know anything. And I'm, I'm hurting a lot. not knowing is so brutal. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, he's very, he's very, very special in my world. And I just, yeah, I'm feeling. Well, hopefully Sorry. by the time we make our next video, you have some good news about that. We're going to put up yes. some times for that. Good but, energy, just in that. Yes, right. Just in that. Um, yeah. So that's kind of my check-in right now. I like this. I like doing the check-in. Thank you for being such an amazing friend and for caring. Well, well thank you. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> and thank you too. I mean, you are an amazing friend. I mean, I'm just trying to return a compliment with a compliment, but seriously, you're one of my best yeah, friends. You're one of my best friends. Absolutely. Thank you. We are really good at holding space for each other. Absolutely. Huge love, huge respect. Always. 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 Uh, so today we um, we have we have a topic. 
All right, we do. I almost forgot about them. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so you you had an idea for a topic. It's a great idea. And let's 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 dive in. Let's explore this. Okay. Do you want to remind me? <laughs> <laughs> I am so sure. That is our topic. Oh, the brain. <laughs> that is our topic. Oh it's the compassion that we hold for ourselves and others with the memory issues we experienced. Right. There was. <laughs> brain injury <laughs> for you, migraines for both of us, yeah, um, you know, the illness for me and how our brains change and how everything is random access memory for both of us. <laughs> You're really random sometimes too. Yeah. That excess is also really random. Let me tell you, I mean, random access accentuates those two words. <laughs> Oh, jeez. I don't know. Anyway. So, yeah, this is a good a good topic. I mean, it's really been coming up for both of us. We've been noticing it and seeing it in our lives a lot. And uh, we decided to talk about this and kind of explore where we are and what this is and how we address this for ourselves and for others and what the what the journey looks like, but what the compassion, what the empathy, the support, the sure. let's fill in the blanks. Sure. And let's go with this. Okay. Where should we start? I'll let you start. This is your topic and it's a really important one. Well, let's see. Um, I guess I would start with calling this a blurse. I mean, it's a, it's a made up word, of course, but blurse basically just means blessing and curse. If you watch other videos, you know I've had a near-death experience uh, a little over 11, almost 12 years ago. And um, obviously there's a huge negative side to this. I mean, it's, you know, I, have a, I, I fell 26 feet, hit concrete head first, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of, you know, post-traumatic symptoms that I still live with, as you know, the, the migraines, the brain fog, the forgetfulness, having a hard time focusing, just a complete lack of energy, all these things that are just going along with it. And, and I lived for 44 years of my life that way, you know, or, the, or the, this, this old way that I was, I, that, that, that how I was in terms of my brain was very fast. I was a very fast thinker. Um, I, I could multitask. I could do lots of things at once. It was perfectly natural for me. You know, I used to be a nightclub and concert promoter. And when I was working, I was working primarily in marketing and retail and then jobs like that that require extensive multitasking and you know, require thinking fast on your feet. Um, I also had endless energy. Um, I slept great. One of my favorite things in the world was to sleep. I love sleeping. Um, and that's I had 44 years of my life like that, yeah. and and then the, then the, the, the fall happened, and you know the whole traumatic brain injury thing, um, and, and that all changed. All the things that I used to be good at, I'm no longer good at. I mean that um, I don't think fast anymore. I need I need to slow down, focus on one thing at a time. Especially right now, I don't have a lot of energy. I got to pick and choose my moments when I can actually get something done. So as I mentioned in other videos, I don't like to be a couch potato. I don't like laying around. I like being busy. I like feeling productive, whatever that may mean. I just like to be busy doing something, mm -hmm. um, you know. And 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 also just, I always had just an undivided, and incredible level of focus on whatever I was doing. And and that's one of those areas. And that's I'm doing. There's a certain thing that will bring me right into focus. But for the most part, regular daily things, I have a very hard time. My brain just wants to drift off all over the place. Um, so those are areas where that's the kind of the, the curse part of it, because it's made this life a lot more challenging. And when you're used, when you've, when you've lived 44 years of your life one way, and all of a sudden that's not the case anymore, like overnight that changes. Um, that's a lot to acclimate to. I mean, what I, what I thought was reality before is no longer my reality. And um, I probably said this before, but I, I joke that I'm 56 years old, but I feel like I'm 11 going on 12 years old because I'm literally 11 going on 12 years into this whole new reality, this whole new paradigm that I'm now living, which is completely different. And getting, first of all, learning about this paradigm, learning about this reality has been incredibly challenging and it's taking, it's just, it's just no way around the fact that it's just taking time. Um, you know, sometimes I'm just so used to my brain having been the way it was, I'll, I'll, I'll do something and think that I can, that like even even just remember how to get someplace. My sense of direction is completely shot, which I used to have an impeccable sense of direction. Trying to do something like that, I get myself lost. I'm like, okay, just get the darn GPS out. And <laughs> as we were talking about earlier, kind of laughing and chuckling a little bit about it, it's like, you know, we can have the GPS do the same way. I still managed to get lost. Still have to make take take five, six extra turns to get someplace, even with the GPS. Right. Um, it's so frustrating. And, 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 and you know, one of the things that's the most frustrating and most difficult, I've never been a terribly patient person, especially with myself. I, I, I'm the worst at being hard on myself. 
And learning to be patient has been one of the hardest things for me. You know, and it's, it's definitely a work in progress. I've improved over time to not be so hard on myself sometimes, but then there's just times that I don't know how else to wake my brain up to just get through even a simple task during the day. And it just kind of just wrecks, oh, come on, wake up, come on, get it going, come on, kind of thing, you know? You just get on myself a bit. Um, just try to get this brain stimulated a little, you know? Um, I have things like tea I love to drink, believe it or not, caffeine. Um, I mean, if you're a neurologist or have been through something like this, you know probably for a lot of people with traumatic brain injury, um, caffeine is wonderful. It's, it's, it helps in a lot of ways. I mean, it does. It's not like a, a magical elixir where it helps with everything, but there's just times where it just really helps to kind of get their brain to working. Um, it's funny because it doesn't really wind me up anymore. I don't really get like physical stimulation or energy from it, but my brain tends to wake up when I drink caffeine. You know, I like black tea as one of my favorite sources of it. I'm not a coffee drinker, but I'm a tea drinker. Um, but on the flip side of it all, um, this is kind of crazy. You know, as you hear me talk about, I'm a musician now. I write music, I mix and master music, um, and I have no real actual training in doing it. That is something that literally came out of nowhere. The universe basically set a series of uh, circumstances together up for me, and next thing I know, I'm in a band, and making music with this band at the beginning was all very simple. Mm -hmm. Um, the first band was called Quantum Beings of the Miraculous, um, and it was truly a miraculous experience, especially working with these lifelong musicians, all of them just brilliantly right. talented, and they're letting me come play music with them. Some guy's just been a, a, just a DJ, I don't want to say just a DJ, I love being a DJ, I have huge respect to all DJs, you know, getting, mixing music and knowing how to get a dance floor, dancing and connecting with your crowd, that's a big deal, I don't want to make light of that ever. And I, one of my favorite things in this life I've ever done is DJing, I freaking love it, even now, one of my favorite things to do is just to rock a dance floor. Uh, but it doesn't prepare you for necessarily writing and then producing music. And so for me, it came completely out of nowhere. My first piece of music I ever wrote, I did it completely by accident. I mean, I literally just, you know, I had a friend of mine that was teaching these classes on Ableton, which is a digital, digital audio workspace, which is the one of a, a number of them that are out there that a lot of music you hear on radio stations and streaming out there, is it's, it's done on Ableton or pieces of software like Ableton, and you can literally, right. you can literally do the whole yeah, process. I'm going to adjust this because I'm not comfortable, but okay. I'm totally listening to it. <laughs> That's okay. And I didn't mean to raise it like 10 feet tall. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a giant. I wanted to be comfortable. No, it's, it's okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> You're way up there now. I'm way up there. Uh, oh, I'm taller than you. What? Uh, where was I? <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Talking about writing on Ableton. Oh yes, on Ableton. <laughs> I had a friend of mine who just, you know, just, just doing these free yeah. classes. He just felt like getting some people together and just showing just some Ableton basics. And at the time being a DJ, I thought, how cool would it be if I could just write a beat? You know, I, I always get the beats in my head. Plus, I love to dance. You know, I've got rhythm in my body, and I've always had that. And one of the things that emerged with quantum beings is I became a percussionist. You know, um, a hand drummer percussionist. And um, got to a point where, you know, I, I'm now doing this a lot. So but that, that's, that, I've always had rhythm in my head. That's something that I figured would come kind of easy for me, and it did. And then one night, I was just literally just, just uh, had, had a whole weekend just to do whatever I wanted to do. And thought, you know what? I'm going to just go through the Ableton instrument. <laughs> Anyway, it's awesome. I'm comfortable. This is like total like Three Stooges type stuff right here. Abbott Costello going on here. This is great. Anyway, we're we're close enough friends that we just do stuff all the time oh, with each just, other and make each other laugh. laugh. Oh my gosh! But, um, I will be comfortable, but I'm also going to make you laugh. Oh, uh, of course. Oh, you do totally. But, I want to be up here. I know I'm tall, but I'm not that tall. You're not that but I, but I was just, but I figured, you know, Ableton's got this massive library of instruments and sound, and then of course you've got all these other other ways to modify those sounds, and just you can just create anything you want off of Ableton. It's just so freaking incredible. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. Best thing ever for me. Oh my gosh, it's just kid the candy store type stuff. Okay, but anyway, getting back to my very first ever piece of music, I literally um, was just trying to find a tone. You know, one of the things that tends to help me to slow my brain down help me to meditate, helps with my anxiety, helps me to sleep, is what's called binaural beats or binaural tones. You can go on YouTube or any number of places and find those. And they can go on for hours on end. You know, this is just usually some singular tone set at a particular kind of a frequency, which is conducive to whatever your objective may be, like meditating, sleeping, or whatever. And because I really love those um, and, uh, they, and I find them very helpful. Like anything, you gotta pick and choose. There's a lot of them out there, so not every one of them is gonna work. You gotta like, like 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 music that you like and dislike. You gotta pick and choose and see what works for you and what doesn't. But anyway, um, that's all I was trying to do is just create a tone, a singular tone. 
Right. And so I thought, okay, let's just see what I can come up with here. So I found an instrument that I like and created this long steady tone, tone for about five minutes or so. I mean, some of those binaural beats that you find online, they're, they're like eight hours plus long sometimes, or you know, give or take. But anyway, I just like, yeah, I'll just do like five minutes. Just something I kind of just help me to zone out to. Some a tone that I like. I don't even know what note I was using. I don't know what key you get things in. I don't know anything about music theory or what have you, other than I guess how to structure a piece from being in a band at that point. I've been in Quantum Beings for about four years at that point. And this was in 2018. And um, yeah, I just uh, uh, found this instrument I liked and made a tone. Then I thought, you know what? Maybe I could find a couple, couple other things in there that I can layer on top of this tone and kind of change it into something different than what it is. It was just kind of messing around, just experimenting. So I ended up coming up with this, I think I blended about four instruments into one, put it on the same tone. I don't even remember what note I used, but just found a note that just, again, just resonated in the moment, what kind of felt good to me in that moment. And then all of a sudden I'm thinking to myself, hmm, I think a thunderstorm might sound really cool right now into this tone. And as a DJ, one of the things I've always collected over the years is just, is just sound bites, sound effects, just audio samples of all kinds. I've got you know, cars driving by, to the waves crashing on the beach, the dog, you know, just, well, I think it's a dog's barking, to just um, any, any number of sounds you can imagine. I have, if, if you can imagine, I probably have it somewhere in my library. And I've got lots of thunderstorms in my library. And I thought, okay, let's find a thunderstorm that I like. And, layer it on top of this, on top of this tone and see what I can do with it. So I did that, I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Wow, I like that. And because I was writing some beats already, I thought, you know what, maybe I should put a real kind of a chill, mellow, easy beat on top of this, at least part of it. So I, what I figured I would do is leave the first half open, put the beat on the second half. And I made it again, just kind of a cool, simple little beat, put it on there like, oh, this is shaping up really cool. Wow, this is fun. And not realizing what was happening, I'm still just thinking to myself, I'm just making this single tone still. It's just, there's all the ones that's just still a single tone. And I'm just building off of just one tone. And all of a sudden, I'm getting all these melodies start coming into my brain. I'm just like, melodies. I'm like, all right, let's find another instrument. I'm going to put this little simple melody on top of this, just for the heck of it. What the heck? You know, I got a binaural tone. It's going to have a little simple melody and a beat and a thunderstorm. Cool. So, all right, I'm not going to go through the entire process. But imagine another like I think about another half a dozen layers later instrument layers later half a dozen like melodies later all of a sudden I got this whole piece of music right now so I started on a Thursday night and by Sunday night I'm playing this thing back and realizing I just wrote an entire piece of music and immediately broke down and cried as <laughs> I do that because and this is, of course these are tears of happiness I was excited I could not believe I wrote me me, I didn't imagine I was going to write a piece of music. I wasn't even trying to write a piece of music. I'm like, no, I just wrote a piece of music, and I think I like it. <laughs> and, and and with that, of course, I became obsessed with with the production side of it. I'm like, okay, if I'm going to write a piece of music, I got to make sure it sounds good. So immediately, I decided, okay, I'm going to endeavor to learn how to mix, and I'm going to learn how to master. And that's quite a large endeavor. People go to school for years to learn this kind of stuff. People go to school for years just to write a piece of music, which I thought, you know, if I was ever going to write a piece of music, when I first got to Ableton, I thought, if I ever got to a point where I could write my own piece of music, it was going to be years, years down the road. And I just got to learn a lot about music theory and all these other things. And all of a sudden, I just visualized it, and I created it. And so go, go let ahead. me ask, so how did this help you heal or embrace pain, headaches, memory? Like, what was it about this process that helped you work through the memory issues that you were having from the accident? I don't think it affects my memory issues at all, other than when I can visualize something, my, if you want to call it a memory, because when I visualize something, it's like I'm just looking at it in my mind. So I don't know, technically, if you want to call that memory necessarily, maybe it's a form of memory. But when I can visualize something, I can remember things to the most finite detail. I mean, incredible, incredible detail. So when it comes to music, I remember everything. I mean, everything I've played with, like my project Naga, everything I've played with Quantum Beings, I remember everything. If I was sat down and play even a track I haven't played in a few years, boom, it'll just, as soon as I hear the first note, boom, it just all comes right back. And not just I'm hearing it, but I'm seeing it in my mind. You know, I have one of my friends, you know, the, uh, the, the drummer from Quantum Beings, you know, we were working on some tracks together because we, you know, we, we had a little side project for a little while there. And, um, and I made a comment about, okay, let's, let's put this together like this and let's see how it sounds. And he looks at me and he goes, do you see music? I'm like, yeah, you know, as a matter of fact, I do see music. And it's true. I mean, not only am I hearing the music with, of course, my ears, but in my mind, I literally am visualizing the frequencies. I, 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 it's not like visualizing in the context of what you see with your physical eyes. I'm not sure exactly how to explain it. It's very abstract in that context, yet at the same time, it's incredibly organized. So um, if it's talking about memory, 
I've learned how to visualize certain things in my life, which help me to, to, to remember, I suppose, better certain situations that happen. I can't do that with everything, obviously, because there's still, still certain things I really just genuinely struggle with when it comes to trying to remember and process. Um, but also, too, something about music, whether I'm writing a track or doing mixing and mastering, is just somehow so easy on my brain. I mean, I literally could be feeling like complete crap. I can't do anything else. I, I don't want to move. I can't open up my book to start writing the book. I can't open up a, a Photoshop to work on one of my designs for my store because that's just too much for my brain. I can't do it. I, I just I feel like too much like crap. My brain hurts, whatever, migraine, what have you. Um, but somehow with music, as long as it's not a monster migraine where I'm just down in bed because obviously those happen. But something about music, I don't know what it is, but it's just so easy. It's so gentle on me and my brain and my being that I can just almost always do it. And I've also found too that when it comes to like jamming with my bandmates, there are times I've gone to jam sessions before where I was like, you know, I should just go to bed right now because I've, I've got a migraine, you know, and I'm, I'm not feeling well. And I'm like, you know what, but I want to go play music so bad. I don't want to miss this because I love it so much. It's just so enriching and so just such beauty to my soul. I, I don't ever want to miss it. But what I have found interestingly enough is sometimes when I get to where, you know, you know whether it's a studio or meeting up at the park like we do sometimes to just go play some music together, it's amazing to me how much the music can actually take away the migraine. It doesn't work every time. There are times when the migraine sets in, it just sets in. But far more often than not, when I've got the makings of a migraine and I go play music, go work on music, there's oftentimes, many times, where the, the migraine will slowly subside. And by the time you know, you know we're in a full-blown jam mode, and all of a sudden, I don't know what it is. I'm relaxed, of course I'm happy, I'm in my space, and the headache's gone. Um, I'm tired, I might be tired and exhausted, but Again, somehow the music is just so easy and so gentle on me that um, I, I can just keep doing it. And it, it's, it's, just, it's just one of those things that's just incredibly effortless. So I guess in those contexts, you know, that's a, it, it's been very healing and very positive, um, not just for me as a person and my soul, but it's been very positive, I think, physiologically for my, for my brain injury and for my migraines and all the little symptoms, that, actually little, all the symptoms that come with it. Um, so I don't know how to explain it. I wonder if you're giving on an EEG or something like that. I wonder how the brain would look, you know, when I'm, when I'm going into a migraine, then I start to work on music or start playing some music. Um, what's going on with my brain, that's whatever shifting in my brain that diverts the migraine. Um, I, I don't know. I thought that too. I'd love to see your brain when that, when that shift happens. Sure. It is just an amazing thing. Um, I, I, all I know is I'm grateful that there's something, you know, there's this one thing in the world. I mean, like I say, there's sometimes I'm just down, the migraine is so bad that nothing helps and I just have to be down with the lights off, in bed, eyes closed, in a fetal position, so it's so bad. And I know you get it, because sometimes it's just, it gets that bad. Um, so but, bad. There, but, but there are just so many times too where I, I've just been grateful that, like I said, to just have music in my life. Because when I can't do anything else, you know, on those days where I just, I'm wrecked, I can't write my book, um, I can't open up to work on designs for my store, can't do my, my research, you know, I do gravity research, and plus I have all my ideas that I think I've talked a little bit about in the past with gravity's relationship to the, to the, the unified field, and the multiverse, and so on, that it's, it's very difficult for me to do that. Um, but the music is like, it's always there. Um, and the music is just proven on so many levels, not just, again, spiritual, but also physical, to be immensely and incredibly healing. You know, getting back to what I, you know, the, 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 the blessing part of the, 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 the post-near-death experience life, post-traumatic brain injury life, um, my, the, the other thing that's been wonderful is that I do have an understanding and, and because of this, I think it's my visual acuity being what it is, it, it does translate into other areas like quantum theory, uh, like cosmology. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to do physics. I'm not, I'm not a scientist. I'm not doing that kind of stuff. But conceptually, I understand this stuff. I mean, I know it sounds funny, and, and, and I've heard, you know, I've heard the, uh, quantum theorists say, well, if somebody claims to understand the quantum realm, they don't really understand it, and I can understand why. But the crazy thing is, I'm really very comfortable in the abstract. Mm -hmm. The abstract is also very easy for me. And um, I've, I've got some ideas that I have friends of mine, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to connect with the right physicist at some point where we can take these ideas and start turning them into working scientific theories. But I, I do, I, I understand the nature of consciousness. I understand the nature of existence itself. Um, I, I believe I can even explain an idea on what dark energy, dark matter really is and how it actually works. Um, and what's interesting is that it fits so many of the models, especially the, 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 some of the newest like ideas and theories that are coming out, especially in the fringe areas of these sciences, that my ideas work with these models. They work beautifully with these models. 
And at some point, I look forward to getting them out to the right people. And someone's going to go, wow, Rex, you're right. There is something here. Now let's start putting some science to this, putting some, maybe to put some physics to this. And as I say, I'm just a guy who has some ideas have hit his head really hard. Um, but, you know, in the hands of the right physicists, right cosmologists, or what have you along those lines, um, this could become working scientific theories in the, in the scientific community. And I think it could totally change just the way we look at existence, consciousness, and the, the way we think of even, you know, even the quantum depths of cosmological expanses and all of that. I think it could really have an impact on all of this, on, on potentially, on, on a seriously, uh, you're not a profound, I, I hate to say it like this, but a pr profound scale even. Um, but, you, but Yeah, and let me ask, do you think that this could tie into manifesting? I, I think so, and I'm not sure I can completely put it all together because manifesting is something I feel like I'm still learning because um, I think part of it is my, my inability to focus sometimes, I think inhibits my ability to manifest. Um, but I think that um, it, it does tie together just because it's, I'm drawing off of the, like, what I feel like are the, are the core source aspects of being itself. You know, in my right. native experience, if you watch those videos, I talk about this, you know, and for a moment, I was the source being, I was the right. source, of, I was love, I was life, I was the mind, the imagination, um, it, it, that, that gives rise to creation itself, mm -hmm. that, whole, that whole thing that I go through. Um, and this is where it all comes from. I think the music comes from that space, and these ideas on gravity's relationship to the unified field and the multiverse all comes from this space. And these ideas that I have about you know, consciousness and our relationship to consciousness and the idea that to me it is the most fundamental force of existence, period. You know, I believe I've heard it said in Hinduism that it, everything's consciousness. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense to me now. I get that now. I understand right. that now. Everything is consciousness. Yeah. Uh, even even this, 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 this uh, table or bench bar right here, whatever you want to call this, I mean, it's not sentient. Yeah, it, does not, it doesn't yeah. grant it. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I knew what you meant. But, um, but... It doesn't have, it's not sentient, it's not self-aware, it's right. not capable of having an experience in the way we can identify. But even the granite comes from the same source consciousness that you and I come from. That's right. It's all part of the same creation. So, so that being said, do you, let me ask just really like basic yes, no. Do you believe in miracles? <laughs> yes. Do you believe in manifesting miracles? Yes. Do you believe in manifesting them? If you believe in manifesting them. Yes. Miracles. Okay. So do you believe that you can manifest healing, that you can manifest wholeness, like um, pain-free, you can manifest perfect memory? Yes, it is possible. It is, it is possible okay. for sure. Okay. And part of that comes from, from the fact that I've already exceeded my, per and I know you have too, you've got an incredible story yourself, but part of it comes from the fact that I've exceeded like every medical expectation my doctors and therapists ever had of me going all the way back to when I was in the hospital. Um, I definitely still have my issues that I still think I can move past. I, I, I do believe that is definitely possible. Even my neurologist made the comment to me once, Rex, I've known people that have had migraine situations as severe as yours, that one day they wake up and they're gone. They just stop. So it's possible. Even medically speaking, it's possible. Right. And, um, and I know, considering how far I've come over these years, um, the fact that I can walk, you know, move around without a cane and without a wheelchair, considering all the broken bones I had, I broke my pelvis in four places, I broke my leg, um, had five cracked vertebrae, eight broken ribs, destroyed my elbow, etc. Um, but the fact that I came back and, and, and able to have the quality of life that I do is a miracle unto itself. Is there room for improvement? Definitely. Is it possible that I can achieve that improvement? I can get to that space you described? Yes, definitely. Okay. Can I ask a few more questions then? No. <laughs> I'm kidding. Of course you can. Okay. Of course you can. Do you believe in music? Definitely. Do you believe in the power of healing? Yes. Okay. Do you believe in the vibration and resonance of a note or a sound? Absolutely. You've heard me yes. use the Tesla quote many, many times to understand yes. the nature of the universe. Think in terms of frequency, vibration, and energy. So you know okay. I embrace that wholeheartedly. So you understand the vibration of every part of it. Yes. Life. Everything in you reality is all vibration. Everything that vibrates makes a sound. It does. It, Do you it, know, it, it have you heard the sound melodies, of harmonies, plants? Yeah. Have you heard the sound yes. of mushrooms, the sound of beings, My the sound of our cell, ourselves. Yes. So like one of the treatments I do is FSM, like for healing. What does that stand It's for? a frequency stimulation. So calibrating cells of certain organs or parts of the body that aren't working up to par, recalibrating them so they start vibrating at the idealized frequency. Okay. Okay. So I do this with um, superconductors like silver, um, different alloys, okay, water, sure. things like that, and 
getting the frequencies to to move and stimulate and vibrate again. Well, remember, you, you did a Reiki level. session for me a while back yes. that was incredibly energetic. And there's no question, okay. you moved some crazy energy when you did that, just using hand and, and just light touch. And just, I mean, so yes, I, I, I embrace that, Thank especially you. coming from you. Thank you. I, I'm very Serious. grateful for that. Yeah. So considering everything potentially has a sound, um, do you believe in string theory? I prefer a unified field, but yes, and, and that's a, a little bit of yes. a minor distinction between the two, in my opinion. Uh, uh -huh. But yes, I, I'll say yes, I do. I do believe in string theory, but I envision it a little bit different. So I like the unified field expression yeah. a little bit better. But yes, okay. I'll just say yes. Do you see how that how that unified field theory can translate to frequency of music notes? Absolutely, tone, sound? I mean, it's, it's all okay. frequency. It, it is. That's all it is. It's so, all frequency. That, I mean, it's, it's all so potential inner, reality and various frequencies is. of that potential reality. So with the interconnectedness, do you feel, accept, appreciate the possibility of the frequency of healing and restoring memory, restoring the brain I think function that's possible too, yes. for you? Yes. Yes? Okay. So I'm hearing that you... I mean, those are my goals. And I won't, yes. as long as I've got breath in this body, I'm moving towards that the best that I can. It's, you know, it's, it, I haven't got it all figured out, obviously, right. but I do believe that possibility exists, which is why I continue to work towards that. It is. So what towards I'm, that reality. What I'm hearing you say is that through these means and more, you believe in manifesting healing and restoration of brain function and memory. Absolutely. Okay. And oftentimes that brain function and memory that we're drawing from may not necessarily be from the, the, from the mechanism of the brain itself. I think it could be coming from any of these we're all part of this, we're all one vibration, you know, at the core. So right. um, that vibrational energy, not necessarily, not necessarily may come physiologically from the brain, but it could be coming from any number of sources right. in that field, if you will. So yeah, absolutely. And some people call that God, some people call that That's source, fine. The spirit, Akasha, love. or any number of things along it's some, Exactly. We're talking so about the same thing, names, yes, it's absolutely. It's the same source, it's the same. Yep. I don't want to give it a name that doesn't fit for somebody. I'd like for people to give it the name that they Absolutely, for them. which is why we're doing this. We, exactly. we understand that there's a lot of ways to explain this and express this, exactly. and it's about finding our own way. We definitely can help each other, we can guide each other, give each other ideas, but we still have to find it for ourselves and see what it means to us. And whatever terminologies you choose to use, that works and it resonates for you, then you use it. You do it. But it's the same it's the same principle. It is. Do you believe of the transition of cells? And formation of molecules, formation of cells, the rejoining of cells when we speak life and beauty and beautiful things over them. Absolutely. Masaru Emoto, um, I, I probably was pronouncing his name, yes. did those water experiments. Dr. Emoto. Yeah, Dr. Emoto years ago. I think it was Masaru. I'm probably saying yes. it wrong and I'm sorry. Um, but anyways, but he did those. If you know about the right. water experiments, I mean, so the, he, he proved it in those water experiments. You know, right. um, he froze, you know, basically took water and froze them and, 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 and crystallized them. Right. And put different intentions into, into these molecular crystals, and right. you know everything from the love energy to anger energy to yeah. any number of different things, and, and 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 the crystals were different each time. You know the love energy formed a very beautiful, intricate, um, very you know just beautiful right. crystal, where it's something that was you know it, it, you know it still was something more, um, I like guess lower frequency, more angry or more negative, but oftentimes be very discombobulated, out of sorts. And this is something that happened over and over and over again. So there's there's actually some science to back this up. So for sure. Oh yeah. Uh, and you know one thing you know that there's a film and what the brief talks about this too is that you know our bodies. I mean we, we you know we're talking about water. I mean of course we're talking about all of our cells, but even just in our bodies being depending on how you look at it, upwards of ninety percent water. Um, and what do you think? I mean if thoughts can do that to a cell, what do you think our thoughts could do to our bodies? And I love that question. It's so powerful. And I think, you know, those same thoughts that can break us down, I mean, negative thoughts do. They can hurt the body, they can bring on disease, they can bring on all kinds of things that are just as unhealthy as the thought process that may, may be behind it. But, but at the same time, um, that same thought process can, can be, can be mm -hmm. shifted and, and create healing and, and create even mir miracles of healing that you would never expect, even in, in, that medicine may, may right. be anticipating or, or, or maybe even predicting, you know. So, I mean, there are people out there that have far exceeded their medical expectations with some of the things that they've been through. And I know some of those stories. As a deep death right. experience, I definitely know a number of those stories of people that have oh, really definitely. defied the odds. And people that have definitely. been literally like dead for an hour plus or several hours and then somehow brought back to talk about it. You know, right. so that's just 
I mean, I was probably yes. just dead for seconds at a time because I crashed a bunch of times when I was in the coma. Um, so, I mean, it's hard to say at that point, you know, what's more profound than the other. All I know is that how it affected me, you know, regardless of that, that, that aspect of, of my NDE, um, all I can tell you is that obviously it's had an incredible, an incredibly profound transformation on me without question. Like I said, it's the blurs. There's, there's the curse part of it. And there's also definitely the blessing part of it. But I'm working on the curse part of it. Like I say, I'm not stuck in that. I'm not attached to that. I, I believe, as you say, you just ask those questions and I'm gonna re reaffirm right now, you know, yes to those questions mm -hmm. and the possibility of a full and complete healing that I could be past the migraines, I could be past the brain fog, restore my energy, um, my, my mental sharpness. I think that's all very much possible and those are all things that I'm working towards, but I don't, I won't accept stagnation within myself. I have you know, high hopes for myself and I'm gonna do everything and everything, I, anything and everything I can to get to that point. And I feel like it is possible. I, I had a setback recently, but I, I'm determined I'm gonna get through that and you know, we'll be right back on course to, to, to healing, continuing to my continued healing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you too. I mean, you've also got, for you know, sure. those, those same questions apply to you as well, for sure. I mean, do you believe in that? Absolutely. And I, and I expect it. Right. I don't, that's part of the frustration is the expectation I hold that this should have already happened. I should already see this because I believe in the fullness of healing. Yeah. I expect the miracle now and I know that the healing is underway and I can see the healing underway. Right. So when I'm not experiencing the result the way that I think I should at this time, which I know not to hold expectations, by the way, I know better than that, but then I also know to hold the expectation of what is seemingly impossible to be possible in order to achieve the miracle, the manifest, like the manifesting result. I understand both, right? And I understand both at the same time in the same space, which sounds like a dichotomy but yet, aren't we all a walking dichotomy at all times? All ways, yep. We're containers for so many things for ourselves and others at every single moment. So how perfect is that in the experience of being human in the shell? Absolutely. Right? I mean, it's just perfect. It is. I mean, in this flawless, imperfect human way that we have of being, as opposed to the perfectly spiritual way of being, which is the expectation. And but then what is perfect? That's a subjective term too. I mean, what does that mean to somebody? And that can right. mean a lot of different things depending on who you ask and, and where they're at in their in their life. And right. And we're and are, are we all changing at every moment? It yeah. is. Giving a hundred percent at all times, knowing our hundred percent can look different from moment to moment and being That's true. Lovingly compassionate for that. Sure, that's very true. Yes. So again, this dichotomy and being this container for so many things at once, it is it is this, it is this experience. And it's the non-attachment of this being and this experience that says, I can be with what arises. And I can be with the, with the imperfection and the lack of result that I'm seeing in this moment while knowing the fulfillment of this thing I'm manifesting is coming to fruition and seeing where I was and where I am and how much improvement is in that, as opposed to where I was and doctors saying, you only have five weeks to live. Right. I mean, you, you're, you're, you're dying and you need to make end of life arrangements right now because this is all that's here. Sure, and, and you know, in, in a different context, I kind of had that too. Yeah, I mean, you were exactly. literally told you had like five weeks and when I first got brought into the hospital after I fell, um, you know, I've, I've had several of my doctors and I have one that I still see that still refers to me as a walking miracle because they've explained to me, you weren't even supposed to survive the first night. Right. I mean, if anything that could have gone wrong would right. go wrong, it did for you. And it's just, we did not even expect you to get through the first night, um, let alone to be able to survive this thing and have any quality of life. And you got told point blank, just, just start making that's arrangements right, right now. Yeah. And you know, because that's it. Yeah, this is like, it. You're, you're checking you out, chance. get everybody like, like, almost, you have no chance. Yeah, yeah. yeah get your hello. parents here, get everybody here who matters. People need to come say bye. Like this is it. You're never leaving any of this. Like right. you just need to get your affairs in order and be done. <laughs> I mean that was, but then that wasn't the first time I've had to face that. Right. So I'm just kind of like, you know what? I have signed up to be love. I have signed up to be the living, breathing being example of God's love. So I have a pretty big commitment here. 
and I can't give up and I can't quit and I will continue being a walking example of miracles and things which are seemingly impossible with a higher intention, a higher purpose, and with good reason. And even though we both still have our challenges, we've already been, you know, through that those those miracles for sure. Oh yeah, and we continue to every single day, every day, every so day. So we both understand that anything truly is possible, and regardless of our current right. sets of challenges, we realize we can still come through those. Uh huh. We can. I mean, look and at we, look we, at the neither challenges. Neither one of us wants to be stagnant. We don't want to like settle. We're not going to say nope, no. This is all there is, and we're just going to be stuck like this. No we way. Don't There's no way. Oh, and, and one of the ways you do move forward with that, that one of the ways of these miracles having when a chance of happening is for you to get to allow for it, to believe that it is possible first and foremost. I mean, I think again, you, you hit a good point about you've got to be careful about expectations. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, it isn't an expectation. I don't think anything owes me anything. I don't want to no. put it up, put it out there like that. But it's just, I believe that it's possible. I, you know, I had come so far already. Why not just come rest, the rest of the way? Right. I mean, we've already shown that, you know, we can already defy, you know, those, 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 those odds. Why not continue to do that? That's right. And the human body and the human mind, you know, the soul, it, it is so powerful that way. Love truly is the most powerful force in the universe. And it does truly heal on all levels, not just on that deep spiritual level, but it can heal the physical body as well. Exactly. Like I say, you, know, you put love into those cells, put love into those molecules, water, into those crystals, holding a can water. of water, absolutely, and filling it with love, and it's fizzing a lot more than it did before, <laughs> which is great. It's responding. Of course. It's audibly responding. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's more activity than there was before I sent love to this. It's just more active and bubblier, and I mean, it's an instant response. And it, what's interesting when I was learning so you know as i'm a master life coach through k miller's program and when i was learning from Kay, the power of manifesting miracles um in her life coaching program i'm now a master life coach in her program but when i was becoming a life coach and learning learning what this is what this looks like and how this is daily life this isn't a thing that you read about and it's called a secret and you put it aside and you don't really share it with people and you just sort of secretly privately do it and then these great things are just supposed to sort of appear in your life it just doesn't work like that this isn't the book you put down this becomes a guide to everyday living where you use this every single day of your life the books never put down right, you know it doesn't right. it doesn't get dusty the, 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 mindfulness the pages are there. tattered there's notes everywhere it's you know it's because it's used every single day right. and it's just, and it's growing and evolving every single day right so when I was learning, I was sitting at a coffee house um, in Houston on Montrose. <laughs> and I was, I was reading about this and I was like, I, and I was drinking a latte. I had a coconut milk latte. And I'm, I'm reading this and there's froth on the top of the latte and it's in this big beautiful cup similar to the, these cups that we're drinking from. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, I'm just going to sit here and I'm just going to focus on love. So I just put my hand over it and I love up. And I just took my hand off. The froth formed a heart. <laughs> and I took a photo of it. I was like, you've got to be kidding. This is instant. This is instant. This is in the moment. And I have, I have that photo. I'll show it to you sometime. It's an interesting thing, putting out that intention, not necessarily with an effort necessarily. Right. You don't want it to be conscious. It's like that consciousness, conscious mind, if you will. Can sometimes almost take away from that. You want it to just be flowing right from that deepest, most source level, and and that's where this seems to come from. And I find I I can do similar kinds of things, but it's like it's like thought without thought, if that somehow makes sense. Intention without expectation. Intention without. I mean, there's movement, but it's without movement at the same time. Right. There, there's like a, a finesse to it, I guess you could say. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely intent. It doesn't just happen, but it's... But it's a pure form of intent because it's not laden it with any other areas of like a conscious thought necessarily. It's, it's, well, it's like coming from that, that, that very core source place. I, that, that soul, I, I the might... Level, soul deep. It is soul deep, but I might disagree with part of what you said because the way that I manifest is I believe it and visualize it and see it to such depth that I feel the air in the room, smell the smells, hear the sounds. I think you're saying the same thing. I see the setting as it is where I go there and I I speak out loud 
in the situation visualizing and feeling and but that's pure experiencing intention. That's pure it intention. to such a degree that it's real and I'm there. Yeah. I'm saying that's, it out loud. That, that's like I'm living that's it. Pure, that's pure intention. That's exactly what I'm saying. But in doing so, I've also learned that that is a fantastic way to, feed, to heal old hurts and harms Definitely. and traumas and micro traumas and complex traumas and all these it's things. It's one of the ways you face those. You have to pick up the bring those up, face those well, and understand those. It is, but it's also a type of healing that can't happen in the real world, but it can happen in the manifesting world where the brain and the heart and the soul have a connection that when you do this work, they start transforming and healing right. the experience so that they no longer take on the trauma as being unresolved and their reality shifts and then the nervous system starts to heal. So the anatomic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system begin to work in a cohesive manner. The body starts to heal and the deep work happens. And if I need to revisit and do that over and over and over, I can still get that work done in my own way and heal the things that really caused harm sure. and didn't fit. It comes from that pure, authentic place, absolutely. It does, but it's deeper. It's the manifesting and a realization that in the alternate universe, this actual healing and forgiveness transpired in a full action, in a full setting, and an actual dialogue. Absolutely. Well, that's a, a very important way. thing to say is that the actions that you perform have to coordinate with the intention and the visualization, all the things you talk about. You know, put that into motion, then, then of course the physical aspect happens. All I'm suggesting is that this comes from that very pure place from deep down inside. That it, it does, it does. Because for me, forgiveness is instant. Now for a lot of people, the forgiveness is not instant. The trauma could last, but the forgiveness is instant. I don't have to wait for that. There was one incident, one time in my life where I did not have instant forgiveness. And from that experience, I learned instant forgiveness. I had to go through that uncomfortable, unknowing, learning, growing <clears throat> to say I'm never experiencing that again. I will never go back to that. That is exactly who I don't want to be and how I don't want to live and how I don't want to feel. I want to live with a deeper, unconditional love at every single moment for every single being. I will instantly forget. And in the moments when the deepest harm has happened, I would be praying for the person while they're harming me. Understood. In every circumstance, including sexual abuse. As it's happening, I'm praying for the person hurting me. And the forgiveness is instant, even as it's happening. And I learned that by holding something from somebody who asked for forgiveness saying, I will never do that to somebody else. I'm a changed person. I see what I did and I'm so sorry I did that. I didn't understand. I was completely misled by literature, by society, by pornography, by magazines, by whatever. And the list went on and on and I was wrong and I hurt you. I will never hurt anybody again. And I know for a fact that person will never hurt anybody again. And that's the greatest thing I can ever ask, that that kind of heart change would happen. And, and that I should have like instantly said yes, and I didn't. I held and I had to do my own work around it. And that work led me to instant forgiveness. Wow. So it was powerful because as a teenager, I had to learn it. And that's how I got to where I am, uh, even in a moment of the most horrible thing, I could instantly forgive. See, that's a powerful gift. I mean, I didn't, I didn't really learn the gift of forgiveness until my near-death experience. I hung on to so many things, you know, from tragedies, from childhood, to things that I've done that you know, I was disappointed in myself about. Um, mm -hmm. The forgiveness thing was something that was really difficult for me, you know, and took a near-death experience for me to finally learn that. So that's that is really powerful that you're able to do that, especially from early in life. That's actually. It wasn't early enough, but in a way it, it was because I learned what I needed to learn. I 
wish so much I would have never had to learn it. I wish I would have been born with that knowing rather than growing into that knowing. But the growth is what made it so solid that when it's tested, it's bulletproof. Right, for sure. And I don't think that that's for me to be tested to know. I think it is an example of faith. Like it's just a showing up of that. Sure. I wouldn't ask that or expect that of anybody. I'm not saying anybody else has to do that. That is I mean, not about anybody way. else. Yeah, that I is, mean, that's, that's for me. Everybody's got to process yeah. their pains the way yeah. they process their pains. You got to heal yeah. your inner, but whatever that process yeah. is natural for you. But I think the goal is right. to just focus on that healing one way or another. But just it, focus on, on that healing. But the gift has helped me survive. And forgiveness is Trauma's a big part of learning and that. being able to heal, learning how to heal and being able to heal. Forgiveness really is a key and important part of that. I know that was a massive part of my healing coming out of a new death experience, especially learning to forgive yourself. I mean, in my case, um, I, I definitely have things that I, I needed to forgive myself for, especially coming out of that new death experience. And, and that took a lot of the weight off my shoulders. Mm -hmm. and I think it allowed me to, to, to let the real me out. And I think that the more authentic, pure, true, loving me and allowed me to, we talk about it all the time, to yeah. choose love. And you know, and, and, bring, love. and bring love into, into whatever situation we are, we're in and within our lives and make that's sure, and again, I, and, and that instant forgiveness you talk about, that's something I can do now. I was not able to do that before, but I'm all about that now. You know, even when I'm being hurt by somebody in the middle of that, I mean, I'm, I'm already there and I'm already again, I'm thinking about what's behind that, you know, what's driving them to do what they're doing. Um, no, grant you, I'm not stupid. I'm not going to put myself in this situation multiple times over to get hurt multiple right. times over. That's not what we're talking about. But at no. the same time, if you want to understand and you want to be able to be with that person in one form or another, because if there's any chance you're going to be able to have at least some sort of a peaceful resolution amidst a potential you know, tragedy like that, right. it, it is going to be through that forgiveness. And it's okay to have compassion for somebody else saying, this is their even when they hurt you. They're broken. But when showing you understand up. exactly, I'm gonna say when you start this, to understand this is where them that hurting that's is showing from. up. This isn't about me. Even when they're doing something to me, it's about them. It's not about me. That's why it doesn't fit for me because it's not about me. So it's not mine to take on because it's happening to me, but it's not about me. I just happen to be there. It's about them. There's complete freedom and letting go in that. There is. I don't need to take that on. And carry that weight. I mean, yeah. I mean, I've carried so much weight in my life over things like that. I mean, it's just, it, it, talk about, just talk about burden your being, burden right. your soul. I mean, and, and, and it will change you because all of a sudden now you've got all these proverbial skeletons in the closet, kind of the ghosts from the past or whatever analogy you want to use along those lines. And, and, and they will, they will affect you in your life, right. especially in your relationships. I mean, I know from my own experience, there there were times that I would get involved with, you know, even, uh, getting involved with a girl, getting getting close, becoming intimate, and all of a sudden, some of those ugly things would just start coming out, start becoming trying to be intimate and, and you know, vulnerable. You know, that's one of those things that will totally bring out those those proverbial skeletons and ghosts from the past. And I mean, being your best, especially in a situation like that, being able to let love flow, um, that forgiveness is just powerful. It is. In you know, I think one of the things that kind of naturally led us this direction into this conversation when we were talking about healing is that <clears throat> traumas that happen in our lives often equate to illness when they're not resolved. And I don't think that it's an accident that the conversation took the turn that it did saying what creates healing. I think it's looking at what creates healing with harm, what creates healing with illness because harm can lead to illness when it's not resolved. And I've seen, I've seen especially cancer with Absolutely. a lot of oh young people, cancer will form in young people who have extreme traumas. And I mean, I had a client who by age 26 had a double mastectomy and she had a lifetime of repeated traumas all through her life. And when she healed and recovered and went through reconstruction, had her surgery and was cancer free, had been beyond remission and fully recovered, I talked to her one day and I said, you know, I notice a lot of younger people who've had a lot of traumas experiencing cancer at a very young age. She said, oh my God, that makes so much sense. She said, I don't think I would have said it had you not named it. But now that you've said it, she said, I think that's why I had cancer at such a young age. She said, I think that's why I had a double mastectomy. 
at such a young age. She's, I, yeah. I think it's kind of similar she, to she, what she you're said, going. I think this. I think the trauma stayed in my body. I didn't have any way to get rid of it, and it caused illness. Right. She said that totally makes sense. I said when you were first diagnosed, I thought that that's what happened, because you've had experiences that nobody ever needs to have, right. and yours started as a toddler. And especially when it happens over and over and over again, and it's kind of like you were just talking about earlier in the video, having nine deaths in like nine weeks. Um, that's not much. That, that's not much time to process through such profound experiences. No. And life traumas can work the same way, especially when you're a young person that doesn't necessarily have um, the knowledge and the understanding of how to work through and process through such traumas on their own. And maybe they doesn't have or don't have people to talk to to help them process through these. Same way. I mean, if, if it happens like one right after another, right after another, right after another, it just builds up and builds up and builds up. You know, they don't they don't know how to process it, let it go, and it does. It just eventually something's got to give, and a lot of times it's us. Right. With the body. A lot of times it's us. Yeah. And every single person in my life who's transitioned in the last eight weeks has been a younger person. So obviously, it's, it's, it's bad to lose anybody, even if they're ninety years old. I mean, if you love somebody, you love somebody. But it, right. it, there's, there is something to be said when it's somebody that's, you know, should still have a lot of time to look forward to in, in living their life. Right. So. I think, I think that the unresolved and the lack of forgiveness and the things, I think the things that we hold in us, the things that we don't know what to do with are the things that can keep us sick. And I think a lot of times, that what the forgiveness and letting go and, and the healing, and, yeah. those are the things where we're like, no, not only am I forgiving and I'm letting go, I'm not holding these things in, I'm doing my work every single day. And you're feeling it, you're like, you're feel it. But I'm, I'm manifesting miracles. And I'm manifesting perfect wellness and health and healing. And I can see, for you and me both, the progress that we have made in our lives, the progress we continue to make, and how we're not a label, we're not a diagnosis. Right. We are way beyond an expectation. And we we can see the miracle and healing continuing to happen. Absolutely. Versus being stuck with, wow, I'm really hurting. It's like, I am really hurting. And look at what this can mean or look at the shift in migraine patterns. The migraine patterns indicate that when there is a change, that healing is the possibility. Because when they stay the same, then there's not really progress, there's just kind of staying the same. But when there's a change and a shift in the migraine patterns or the symptomology or the side effects, that often means that the pattern is shifting, which means healing can happen. Sure. And this is kind of a sign that we look for even when it's uncomfortable. Right. This doesn't mean that we have digressed. This means this is a possibility Potentially for an opportunity our, way, our way through and out and overcoming that where it's no longer true for us. Right. I'm holding that space. I feel you. I'm holding the space that memory's improving for both of us. I'm halfway through a two-year detox, this really intense, very, very intense, life-changing protocol, uh, medical thing I'm going through. You are going through your transitions. Our memory is shifting because of it. And when I see the changes, I'm just like, wow, this again can be a sign of progress. Right. And on the other side of this, what is the next year and a half going to look like or the next year going to look like sure. when I finish what I'm doing? Even though it's hard right now. And since we're in a brand new year, it's great to think about, okay, what's what's this next what's twenty twenty three going to look like? What can we manifest? What miracles <sighs> Can we create? There are so many good things, particularly career-wise, on the horizon this year. This year is going to be really life-changing. Absolutely. I'm it feels like it could be absolutely epic. so excited The word for this, this whole new year has been epic 2023. Yes. Have an epic new year. Epic, 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 epic. <laughs> But no, seriously. And not she, to be she, tossed lightly. Not at all. No, not this even a little is, bit. We've been talking about For both of, of us, we, we know and when we're ready, when the time is right, yeah, we're, we're going like to make some big announcements on this channel. This, 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 you know, take it take, take as a call. We don't want to get ahead of ourselves here. And let things manifest nice and naturally and organically. They are. Yes. They are transpiring. Things we've both been waiting on for so years. I mean, I mean, we have years into this. Yes. Years, years. And, and it's. And then we have every reason to believe that 2023 is that year where it's all coming together, all coming together. You know fruition. what kind of year this can be? Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait for it. Wait for it. Wait, wait for, for it. it. Wait for it. <laughs>
It's this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's this kind of yet. <laughs> Moving on up. Moving on up. You remember the Jeffersons from the 70s? Side. Moving on up. Moving on up. All right. All right sorry. I digress. Uh, hey, I love that show. Yeah. Anyway. We love that show. Oh, my gosh. And a painting at the end of the show. I forgot the name of the painting. Do you remember the name of that I painting? Don't. It's a really famous painting. But it's just like. So anyway, but the oh, idea, the idea yeah. is, is, is onward and upward. I'm manifesting growing, that painting. Evolving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, incredible. But the growing and evolving. And, you know, we're being just goofy. But, we are. <laughs> but, but seriously, and, and, you know, Check and it out. the idea is that we, we are. It's, 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 it's about finding, finding our way, all of us. We are. And, and we want, and we the don't want to, it's not just way. about us. We hope some of our excitement can be infectious and, and, and rub off on you because hopefully you've got things you're looking forward to. One of the things I've been hearing from a lot of people. And you know that I have a lot of different lives and life choices. <laughs> um, I love you but, so much. <laughs> but, but saying the same kind of thing, you know, but people have just a rough 2022. A lot of people have been waiting for a lot of things for a long time, and they're saying, nope, 2023 is the year. It's going to happen. 2023, 23 is the year. Yeah, Dreams are coming have, true. Things were so tough since 2017, and even since 2014. But really, 2017 is when, for me, they just took over. I understand. Yeah. I mean, my, my, my you know, NDE was 2011, and it, I, I haven't been right since. It's been one gigantic, huge challenge ever since. So for me, it's literally, my life was getting pretty good before the NDE happened. Um, but it, obviously, it wasn't the life that I was meant for. But seriously, you know, it's been 11 going on 12 years in the making. And, That's right. Um, really excited feeling very positive and feeling like 2023 is that going to be that epic yes. year where it's just all going to come together yeah i'm just <laughs> seeing so many miracles show up right now and just the best possible things are coming way. together the right people are kind of coming out stepping <laughs> up you know for different areas different things that we need just you know one thing about you know <sighs> You know about about finding your way is that you know we're not we don't we're not trying to do it by ourselves and people that are successful in this world that that are uh, we use the word achieving what have you um People don't, don't do it themselves. You know, they catch breaks and they have people that help them, that work with them. You know, the kind of things that we like to do, it, it takes a team of people to do it. We can't all do everything by ourselves. So, um, and it's like the right people are stepping up, the right, right pieces are starting to fall into place. And, and there's just every reason to believe that, you know, the time is now. It is. Yep. And when miracles happen, they happen now. And it, it tends, things yeah. can, you know, the way things can spiral down all at once, guess what? Things can just blow up all at once, just like that, too, all of a sudden. And I love it. One of them, there was an, uh, I don't remember who it was, though. There was an, uh, I was reading about a, uh, one of the, uh, an up-and-coming MMA fighter. I can't think of his name off the top of my head off right now. But he, he said it really beautifully. You know, he was talking about how, you know, just, just it wasn't that long ago that his life was a complete mess. He didn't know what he was going to do. He wasn't sure he was going to get food on him, just, a, just, just food for the day. And he's like, you know, life really can't go from nothing to everything overnight. I'm like, you know what, my friend, that is so true. Nothing to everything that overnight, so and that can truly happen. Um, you just, you just don't know. I mean, you could be going through the biggest lulls, the biggest slumps, and all of a sudden, boom, there it is. Right. And sometimes the way that change has to happen is a deconstruction, like to get rid of something old that doesn't fit to make way for something new. Sure. And sometimes it's not just a slight transition. <laughs> Well, most Sometimes of the time, these are pretty big shifts when they happen. These are pretty yeah. monumental shifts when they That's happen. Right. And, and, you know, it can definitely rock your old world when it does, but hopefully it will yeah. rock your world in all the best ways. Yeah. So getting rid of those things that don't fit and don't belong and creating what needs to happen and transpire for the highest good and the best miracles, that is what I'm seeing. Yeah. And every miracle is a great thing, a good thing, but there are some that are just monumental explosions of greatness right there you go monumental explosions of greatness i like that and I'm all that's, about that this is what i'm seeing for us yeah. for this year especially knowing what i know but seeing how the things out of what we've been manifesting wanting dreaming believing perceiving are now really coming to transpire in a big big way right. and how the shift is you know it's not even about us, it's about others. We're, 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 we're sharing some huge blessings for Absolutely. a lot and it's, of people. And, it, and it's gonna involve a lot of people, and if things go the way we hope it's gonna go, hopefully this impact will affect the entire world. I mean, I know it's yeah. lofty, lofty goals, but I mean, 
I'll say this much, I didn't come back from the dead for nothing. I mean, ever since I, ever since this happened, I just had this feeling to just put this out there to as many people as right. possible. And, and, and my goal has always been, you know, to, to take this all over the world. These ideas, these thoughts, I mean, the videos that we're making, um, the idea is it's just to get this out to everybody and touch somebody somehow in some positive right. way, no matter where you are, what you're doing, who you are, you know, what walk of life you come from. And this it. is for everyone. This is for everyone. We're doing it. We're doing it. Yeah. I've even called people and said, are, are you ready for your blessing? I called you. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, are you ready? Like, if this is happening, how can I bless that's you? That's a resounding yes. And this is how it's showing up. And what can I do? And what do you need? Here's what I can do right now. This and is good. The we're trying to help each other and of course we are. help other people. And That's right. We can just blow this thing up every which way we can. You know, those ripple effects can go out in so many negative that's ways. Right. But those ripple effects can go out in so many amazing, amazing and wondrous ways too. And that's where we're at right now. I so. always said anything good that happens for me, everybody's coming along. That's a whole idea. Along. Absolutely. Yes. I'm sticking to it. You are too. Absolutely. The good that happens to, you, to us is happening to everybody. That's the whole goal, yeah. especially the people that are involved with us. We want to spread that to everybody. Make sure that, I mean, if we're going to come up in this, all of this, it's all going to come to come to fruition. The dreams are coming true. Right. We want the dreams to come true for everyone. And like I say, not just for the people that we're just immediately working with, but ultimately the goal is to take this out all over the whole world. That's Touch right. everybody in some way, in some positive, amazing way. And realize that no matter where you're at, no matter how destitute, and I know there's yeah. some really destitute people out there, that, you know, the miracles happen. You know, yeah. that, 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 that dreams do come true. And the healing that we receive allows us to bless others even more. We can work more, we can do more, we can be That's more productive, we yep, can bring absolutely. more people along, and greater things are happening. And this kind of so growth is exponential. This is how we can it's trust and know that our healing is, is happening. So we can see it in many different ways. It's being reflected in a lot of different things as, in, as, as, as it is growing within us, it's growing around us. Yeah. And we are also the mirrors have a wonderful for each other. For that. It's, it's, that's above, so below. And I like that yes. expression. But okay. yeah, mirrors for each other for sure. Because we've definitely been sharing this path now for a few years. Yeah, since we met. Yeah, for sure. We have been mirroring each other since the night we met. Pretty much. Is what we do. It's <laughs> our friends do. Sure. And this is, I think, what we do. If, if there wasn't a mirror happening here, you wouldn't be watching this. So... I'm believing in that as well. And hopefully you've stayed with this whole video. I mean, again, there's a lot here, um, but again, a lot to think about, a lot to draw on, and hopefully something here is touching you in some way and helping you with whatever it is you're going through and where you're at in your life right now. This is beautiful. It is. I love you, friend. Oh, I love you too, friend. And I'm so grateful we do this. And we I get am. to this do this. Great. We've always had an awesome chemistry like this. I mean, you know, nice that we can translate this, you know, and, and, and make these videos together. And, and again, hopefully touching everybody that, that, that watches this. And again, we want to get out there and, you know, again, have some kind of a positive effect on everyone. Definitely. Want to see something fun? Check this out. So you didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining hey, us. Have a peaceful day. <laughs>